Alright, so, a rather difficult tutorial. In this one, we're going to be deforming this piece of paper. Uh, the majority of the work for this one is actually going to be done in Maya, but we are going to solve what we can in Synthize and, you know, set up a rough, you know, little camera scene and scale this up to what it really should be. I got the measurements of this paper. It's standard 4x6 photo paper, but yeah, so this is going to be a rough one. Uh, let's have fun. Okay, so I just quickly tracked my points here uh, on the four corners, nothing in the center. Uh, when we get to solving this, I know this thing bends and, you know, that's not how you want to solve anything because it's not a rigid object, but Synthize will give us something pretty close that's going to get us like 90% of the way there to having our card set in place. Uh, so before I do this card, let me do a quick setup for my scene. So this is a very distorted lens, which I can't calculate because, you know, it's sitting still, so I'm going to have to do it manually looking at the lines. I know that this is 8 millimeters on a micro four third lenses on my black magic, uh, on my black magic camera. So let's, let me go quickly and set my preset for my black magic and cool. And my lens, my lens, I could tell it it's 8 mil, but it's not because of lens distortion. It's just not. It's not 8 mil, but it, it's close. Um, but I'm likely, I'm hopefully going to get something better with lines if I even get enough lines because unfortunately my desk is kind of crooked. And if anybody has seen my tutorials where I use uh, lines a lot, it can calculate an, a nice accurate focal length depending on the shot. But let's just see what route goes best here. So let me go and quickly look at a couple lines here just to see if there's anything I can straighten out by eye. A little bit there. Let's look at the curtain. I, uh, let's use the light even though that's probably not the best decision. Actually, let's just do this right here. That's probably fine. If I hit F3, L lock to camera. It's kind of typical of my lens to look like this. It's close enough. It's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's perfect distortion for something like this because this is distorted. This is warped. We're going to be deforming this mesh. There's nothing rigid about this. Uh, when you're solving a rigid environment and a rigid object, you need to make sure that your distortion and your focal length are as accurate as possible. But let's say they were just going to put a texture on this image and that's it. Just call it a day. Well, we can warp the plane any way we want. We can make it as ag accurate in 3D space as we can, or we can just you know, warp it in this weird shape that it is on a 2D surface. I'm going to roughly warp it uh, somewhat accurately in 3D because it, it's a little bit easier for me to manage that way. Because sometimes when you have something like this, where the geo folds behind itself, if you, you don't want the geo to like come in and intersect itself and get, you know, clipping and all that weirdness, overlapping geometry. So I'm going to actually make, give it a 3D curvature in space and kind of make it somewhat accurate in space and uh you know yeah that's what i'm gonna do so yeah so for distortion we need something general but we don't need it to be amazing uh nor the focal length for this one but i'm still gonna do uh, some quick lines to get me some perspective first so let's delete these null uh these ones that don't do anything <laughs> uh let's see what do i got i kind of like this let's make this our z now i got to flip it because I didn't know I was going to make that Z. So flip. And let's see Y. Let's use that shadow thing as a Y. It's not perfect because this curtain could have moved. And do I have any other Y lines? I didn't really think about that. I could use the other curtains. I'm looking at them right now in my, in my little office room here as we speak. And they are pretty straight. Wait, why did I set this to be X? Wow. Slap on the wrist. Okay, so Y, Z, uh... I could get another Z right there. Um, this thing is kind of pressed up against my wall, so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of parallel to the Z. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty parallel. Don't know why I'm worrying about that. Okay, I wonder. I wonder if I get if I gamma up if I could see this thing in the back. Let's go to levels. I hit P to open up image prep. Okay, so now I can see this box which 
I just had to look under my desk real quick to see if it was up and down. Yes, it is. So we'll try to put a parallel line right there. I don't know how I feel about that. It looks kind of... Things look kind of trippy. Oh, well. That's probably fine. So let's hit F3, and let's just hit a line. We got two axes. We don't need a third for this, really. Alright, so we got that, and look at that. It actually did change our, uh, change our focal length. Made it 10. Um, cool. Things look kind of nice over here. Uh, this thing levels out, creating a horizon line out in the distance, which looks pretty nice over here. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to hit P and just uh, reset my image prep. Okay, let's solve this. Let's make the card. So, oh, I keep clicking with add line turned on. I'm going to undo those little dots I made. Oh, no, I went too far and I reapplied my image prep. Oh, and it's got a cache. Hey, there we go. Okay, so let's make our card. So I'm going to actually make an object right now. So I'm going to come up to shot, add moving object. And let's go, uh, and we got to move these points. Oh, I got to turn off add line. There we go. So let's select these points and we're going to move them under our new object. So I'm going to go over to trackers, use this, come to object one. And no, I don't want to clone them. I don't want to duplicate them. And while I'm under camera one, let's go to solver and disable it. We don't want to change it. And we're happy with the focal as it is now. So it is unknown. So we're going to leave it there. And we're not calculating distortion, that's good. If you have this checked on, the object will still calculate a distortion and mess up your orientation. So yeah, uh, disable camera, your focal length is set to known, and you're not calculating distortion. Let's switch over to the card, where you can see automatic is still on, so we can solve this right now if we wanted to, but uh, actually, let's just see what it does. I'm gonna go. Yeah, so you can see we have a solve and it's working. Um, if I hit 4, uh, yeah, you can see it's kind of a funny looking shape, but that's to be expected because, you know, it's deforming. Synthize doesn't know what to do with it exactly. It's just making something it's happy with. It's also inverted. Okay, so how do we force it to be proper? Let's go make a plane. I'm going to make a plane. Doesn't matter where I drag it right now. And doesn't matter what scale it is. I'm going to go to translate, zero it out, rotate, zero it out. So now we got an object that's nice and level in our object. So geometry, rem remember the diamond itself is your object. That's the object. Any geometry you put inside it, try to have it zeroed out and nice and clean within your object like I just did. Uh, so this card, I don't really need to do this, but let's reduce the subdivisions just to make it a little bit nicer to look at. Sure, why not? All right, um, which way is facing up? Um, that's X, Y, okay. Ah, uh, whatever, okay. I'm gonna go F3, orbit. I don't like how this plane is like, I don't like the coordinate handles having this kind of space. I'm gonna right click, view, local coordinate handles. There we go, now I can see which way the axes, the axis is, uh, I can't say it. Now I can see which way things are facing. <laughs> um, so I know which way is up and which way is down. So let's start taking our top left here, go to F3, and there's our top left right there. I'm going to place, hold control on my keyboard while I left click, because you can see I can snap the constraint around the vertices. Now let's grab the other corner, F3, back over here, hold control, snap your point. And yeah, you can't see them, but underneath, they're very tiny. I'll scale up my scene in a moment so you can see the points. Actually, I might as well do it now. Solver world size, drag it up. There we go, you can see him now. Good for you. Uh, so let's take the bottom left, hold control, click, and bottom right, hold control and click. There we go. So now that we have that, um, uh, okay, I'm back to my solver room. Let's hit F2, I don't like seeing all that other viewing stuff. So when I if I hit solve right now, it's not gonna line up great. You can actually see the inversion now. <laughs> you could see how trippy it looks um, because just because we lock those points doesn't mean that Synthize is listening to them. It's it's approximately positioned the mesh as best as it can at these points with the locks on, with their seed locks. But if we wanted to actually listen to this, we have to check off Constrain. So sometimes this will work right, out, like right away. I'm going to solve. 
Yeah, it didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Sometimes you have to, let me go wireframe. Hit the pipe key under your backspace to go wireframe. Or right click, go view, and sol solid meshes. Okay, so um, how do we fix this? Let's go beginning and end frame. I'm gonna pick two frames with parallax that I like. So I like this one, and then I like this one because it's a good rotation. Um, it might work now. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Where'd it go? So it did things I didn't like again. Um, let's see. Uh, also, I'm going to turn off calculate world size. Sometimes the world size calculating uh, tries to do some scale things to your scene and it affects your points. Okay, so one more thing I'm going to try. I'm going to cycle through these hints here, these directions. So the directions is... If your object is tilting like this, your camera, if you pretend this was an environment, your camera might be moving upwards. So let's try upwards. Go. Okay, that's not working, huh? Let's cycle through these randomly. Oh, wow, left worked. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I get kind of lucky with some of these. These aren't super handy for objects. They're easier to handle when you're doing a camera solve, but sometimes I get lucky with an object. If I didn't get that to work, I would have went and messed around in the advanced solver settings, which I'm not super good at. Sometimes I can fluke off these options like I did in the last object solve tutorial, but this is not my specialty. Uh, I'm, I kind of mess around the random fuzz values a little bit sometimes, but for very long shots, which Synthize specializes in with this stuff. Now that we have a solve, um, let me see what it's doing now okay so I know it's not pushing back and forth in depth like that so I was gonna save this for like a more advanced uh, object solve tutorial but I am gonna re refine the distance of this right now because I kinda want the card to stay at the depth that it's sitting at not push so far back and forth because I bend it. I don't really move my hands in and out or back and forth from the camera's perspective. This isn't the biggest issue because, again, we're deforming this in Maya later, but I might as well just knock out that little weird bit. So if you've seen some of my other tutorials and went to, uh, about the graph editor that I touch on sometimes, you should be comfortable, but I'm going to come over to the object and let's go solve path and I'm going to turn off the color coded, color coded background for trackers, so don't want to see that and hide everything but the path. So let's see, the path right now is moving on the Z axis and that's what I don't like the most. So let's look at Z and here if I watch my hand motion, see I move it back a little bit. Not really though. I'm just going to reduce these hills a little bit. This is very crude, by the way. I'm just doing this to be subtle, or kind of subtle. Yeah, I just don't want that motion to be that drastic. Eh, let's knock this out. Okay. I don't know how, how much good that did, but let me go filtering control. I'm going to go distance. And don't worry about that spike. It's... Uh, Distance is a special kind of smooth that I haven't talked about yet, but distance is smoothing the distance of the object from the this point to the actual camera itself. It's not doing an overall smooth like if I did X, Y, Z. See, it does that. Distance is a little different. So I'm going to reset everything. I don't want to mess with it now. And let's go switch the object to refine. We're happy with the solve as it is, but we just want to refine it now. So axis lock. Let's go distance lock. And I'm going to turn the weight up to 90. It's just a higher weighting, so it listens to what I did here a bit more. So I'm going to hit get, and now we have our measurement. This is a measurement from where the object is to the camera. This is distance. So now that it's locked, and I've done it on the first frame so it doesn't animate in, I can hit go. And now our object solves with that new depth that I left it with. Look, look at it over here. The error is going to go up technically, but I'm okay with that because... Like, this is not expected to stick here. It's not, it's not gonna stick. 
Now you can do some trippy stuff in Synthize with geometry tracking or GOH track up here. Like this is a lot of really cool stuff, except we're not going to use it in this tutorial. This is a little bit advanced and I'll try to make a tutorial on this later. Uh, in fact, I plan to. We're going to be doing probably head track and somebody's jaw moving and stuff. Um, so yeah, this is our object solved. This is what I'm going with. And we're going to take this over to... Um, uh, hey, did I, did I even scale this plane? I didn't scale this plane, did I? Oh, man. Okay. So I got to scale this, pr uh, this plane properly. I didn't do that. So I measured this stuff on my, I, I measured this stuff. Actually, I didn't measure it. I just know what the measurement is. It's four, it's four by six inches. I'm going to enter that in in centimeters. So I'm going to take the plane, go to scale and let's see, uh, we're going to go 10.16. Oh no, the size is going to change so much. I just, I just love all that I've done in this tutorial that I don't want to redo this. So let's see, what do I got? Uh, 15.24 centimeters. Look at how tiny that is. Okay, so I'm going to take these points now. And F3 and wow, that's a tiny object. So let's go turn the world size down a little bit so it's a little bit more manageable now. So with that left point selected, I'm going to go place, hold control, snap, and grab the other one. Control, snap and so on let me just knock this out good and i'm going to have to disable my distance now because that's not a realistic measurement to the camera now that we've done this okay so let's pray that this works hey it worked oh my goodness okay so now our object instead of being out there being this big we've constrained to a smaller geometry and we've solved it and it's snapped to its new distance that's pretty cool Oops, I don't want to move that. I wanted to move the whole camera scene a little bit. Center it out in there. And I don't care where it is in space right now. You could make your environment and model it if you want, but it has no purpose for this shot. So at this point, um, I don't want to do the smoothing again. So all I'm going to do is, you, you know, you, you've heard my reasoning for why I might smooth it manually like I did. So if you, if you feel like you need to, go ahead, but for now, I'm just going to go distance and smooth. Uh, well, what am I in? Oh, I'm in camera. Oh, the camera has no animation. I'm not smoothing anything. We're cool. I'm going to switch over to object. Sorry, it's switch. Uh, sometimes you're locked in camera by some bug or whatever. So let's go distance under object one and hit it with a couple smooths. There we go. And reset. Okay. One more time. Axis locks, distance, get. There we go. We got our distance loaded in. We got our distance lock on, and our dist and our weighting is set up to 90, so it's kind of high. Uh, and let's hit go. Did our error change? Yes, it did. So our solve did adjust itself. And here we are. That is our final solve, yet again. Now let's go ahead. Go to summary, lens workflow, redistorted, apply. And you're going to want to take your undistorted plate into whatever software that you're working with. I'm doing this in Maya. Um, this isn't the funnest thing to do in other software as far as I can tell. So yeah, Maya is my software of choice for deformations. Uh, yes, so with that being said, I'm going to import this all into Maya. I've done tutorials on how to import the stuff over, so you're just going to have to deal with that yourself. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go file Maya ASCII export and that's about it. Alright, see you in a second. Okay, so I have imported my synthize group. I've uh, imported my UD plate. And I split up my viewport just how I like it. Doesn't matter what you do, whatever works for you. I just split the thing right here and I set one to my camera and the other uh, to perspective. So let's also turn on some anti aliasing because I don't want to look at crooked lines. If you look at crooked, jaggy lines, they're going to make you think that there's some popping in your track, and it's also going to trick whoever's looking at your play blasts for your final uh, daily of this. Okay, so now we have the object. Let's go ahead and make our plane. I'm going to go create and plane. So, plane, I'm going to toss it under object one. And let's control A so I can go to the channel box and I'm going to highlight this. Hit zero. So we've zeroed out everything and I'm going to scale this up. What was the scale in centimeters? 
Is this even centimeters? I don't remember. I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna go six, four, and then I'm just gonna scale it up to my locators. Doesn't matter if it's a perfect fit at all for a shot like this, because we're 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 warping this. We have to warp this geometry. So it doesn't matter what's going on here. So with that being done, I'm gonna take the subdivisions, if we go to our inputs here, and turn them all the way down to nothing, because we are only gonna work with the lowest possible division level we can, which is this. <laughs> and I don't need this input anymore, because we're not gonna adjust the subdivisions using this anymore. So I'm gonna hit Shift-Alt-D, which clears our history. And also, just so I can see things, uh, you could hit 4 to go into wireframe mode and hey you can see it now but it's always a better practice to stay in 5 stay in shaded mode but apply a use background shader so right click assign favorite material use background and now um, there's benefits to that shader and I've talked about it in other videos so I'm not going to show it off here but now we are ready to start messing with this paper and yeah I'm going to use a mixture of joints and clusters on this shot. So hopefully you watched my last tutorial on me just talking about how and why I do some of the things I do. But yeah, uh, let's get started. Alright, so let's get into this. So one thing I also want to mention is that we are going to have to stabilize on the corners of our geometry so that we can better view what is sticking and what's not sticking on our on our manual deformation. Uh, the same way that in Synthize, you can take a tracker and lock onto it and monitor what it's doing, we're going to want to do this with our, ge with our geometry. So in Maya, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download a script which lets you stabilize. I so happen to have a button here from uh, uh, the studio I work for, TrackVFX, which lets me stabilize on locators. And I could set it up so I can stabilize on vertices as well. But you guys won't have this button the same way. So what you want is uh, HK Tools. So HK Tools uh, is a is a site that you can come to. Uh, this guy made an awesome set of scripts and tools for Match Move. Uh, you've got like stabilizers, baking tools, and some constraint stuff. Uh, you can see the stabilizer here at work. This is very easy to install, I promise. And there's good instructions and documentation on it. Um, yeah, so when you download it, it's really just a drag and drop onto Maya's viewport if I remember correctly. But yeah, please get that because I'm going to use the stabilizer here. And yeah, I'm going to use this when I get to that point. So uh, for now, let's go ahead and start messing with our plane. So for this plane, I talked about clusters a bit. So we could take these, take one of our vertices, spacebar, deform, cluster. And then start to, oh, why'd my wireframe? My wireframe went away because I'm not selected on my plane. So to make it appear always, come up to wireframe unshaded. There we go. So now, if I move my cluster, you can see we can nudge this around. And the idea is throughout the shot, we're going to be nudging our main corners into place per frame. It's kind of like manual tracking and synthize, so there isn't too much time lost, honestly, on this process. Um, so I have the choice of working with clusters or joints for this. And I, if, if the paper didn't rotate as much as it did, I would use clusters. But I rotate the paper. So if I go here and you can see when I move the cluster, that vertice moves in a different orientation. There is a fix for this that I sometimes do is when I key or mess with this point, I might do all the adjustments on while the paper is at this angle. So I've done all the adjustments there, and here I would take my locator and I would zero it out. Or sorry, take my cluster and then I would zero it out. So it kind of has a fresh, a fresh point over here. So now I'll make another cluster on this. Reason commands, create cluster. And in this cluster, I'll make the adjustment. And then I'll go back to this other last frame where the other tracker was uh, still doing stuff. Or where the other cluster was still doing stuff, which was what? frame 7. So I'm going to go cluster 2 on frame 7 and zero it out. So now it's back to the command of the other cluster. So it kind of has a little blend in between and now from this angle it's easier to manage again. So that's kind of like not like the most amazing way to deal with things but uh, it's quick 
<laughs> it, it's a lot quicker than setting up a rig and whatever, but for this one we are going to uh, kick this off with joints. But, you know, that is how one corner is done. But I'm going to delete these because I'm not going to start these initial corners with, uh, with clusters. I just have to show that. But now uh, let's take this plane and I'm going to duplicate it. We're not going to rig, we're not going to apply joints to, we're not going to apply joints to the plane that's under the object. I'm just going to make a fresh one, zero it out. Oh, did I freeze history and all that stuff up here? Oh, I didn't take it out from another group. Shift P, now it's in the world space, and I can zero all this out. And if we look at the bottom, there it is. So this is what we're going to apply a little uh, system to, a little a little rig, cheap little skeletal thing to. So I'm going to go to uh, quad view because uh, it's just easier. I'm going to hit shift I on the top view so I only see that and not the geo hovering above. All right, so how do we make joints? Space, skeleton, create joints. I'm going to go through this very fast because I've showed it off already. So I'm going to make one joint in the center. That's our root. And I held X to make it to snap it to the grid. So I'm going to now come to the top view here and I'm going to start making, actually, let me change my viewport color. There we go. Let's hide the grid as well. So I'm going to start making joints at each corner. So I'm going to hold V. There, I've snapped one. And now if I try to hold V and snap other places, you see the joints are continuing in a way that we don't want it to. We want them all to stem out from the center. So now that I made that, you can hit up the up arrow on your keyboard, which moves you up the hierarchy in your outliner. So right here, I, I was on this joint. And when you hit up on your keyboard, it moves you up to here where you can now make your other joints see that and you branched off of that last one so i'm gonna hit up again you can see it moved up hold v move up and hold v there we go now we have uh and we have joints here all at the corners so i'm also going to select this main joint go to Control a so i can get to the attribute editor and if you come over to draw style, we can set to none. And now all we are left with is these endpoints. So we don't have that mess to look at. But see, we can move everything with the root joint, which this is what we're going to constrain to our uh, to our object track. All right, so I'm going to select our I'm going to select our geo and our skeleton spacebar skin and bind skin. So now if I take some of these, you could see that they're influencing the plane, but not perfectly because the joints are just, it's doing its job. It's just, a, this isn't really a typical way you'd want to rig something like this. But uh, now we want to paint the weights of this plane so that they're stuck perfectly to those points. So I'm going to highlight the plane. Well, I guess I didn't need to highlight it, but right click, paint skin weights tool. And here I'm going to select, so you, you can select your joints now. And you can see the influence, it should be like full white. Uh, is it white? What's the colors? Oh, it should be like red. Oh, no, it should be white, yeah. Okay, so let's go with the hard brush and go paint. There we go. And we're just going to do that for the other trackers. There we go. So now if I get out of that paint mode and select our joints, move it around, now you can see our plane is moving. And when I select the root, I can move this at all angles, and now you can see that the, you know, the controls actually do what they're supposed to do, uh, not like the clusters. So I undid that, and let's go ahead and snap this into place. So I'm going to do this in kind of a crude, easy way. It's This thing is parallel to this. I'm going to select our plane, and oh wait, is it this, and then the object we want to snap to? I'm going to hold spacebar, modify, match transformations. Let's go match translation. Okay, and match uh, rotation. I don't want scale, so I'm doing this separately. Okay, so the rotation was a little bit different, but uh, that's not really a bother for me. I'm just going to hold J. Whoa. Oops, my bad. I'm going to select that and hold J, rotate this over. I could have done this. Oh, wait, that's not working. Why? Okay, why didn't that work actually? Why is J not giving me that as it should? 
Oh, it's not even snap. Okay, what did I do wrong? So let's just do it like this. So this looks dirty, and yes, it's dirty. Uh, I've had I've been able to snap it easily, like a lot, like many many times. But for some reason, it's not going for me right now. Um, and I just don't have the time to figure that out. So I'm just lining it up, I guess, um, roughly. And what's great is, be again, we're deforming the stuff. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just because this doesn't match, if just because this doesn't match that plane doesn't make the original plane any more accurate than this because the solve is not accurate. Okay, so um, with that out of the way, I'm going to come into our outliner and hide the old plane. We got our position and I'm going to constrain our root joint to the track because we're going to keep the plane. Let's let's actually group the joints and our paper. I'm going to call this paper. Uh, I die, man. I, it, I struggle to call it a rig because it's Eh, it's not great. It's nothing. It's one geo, one joint. It's, there's nothing riggy about it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to take our object and then select our joint. Now come spacebar, constrain, parent constrain. But we're going to go into options. Make sure maintain offset is on. Otherwise, it's going to snap and do that, that axis that it did before. So add. And now we have, uh, let's see, camera one. No, let's split my viewport the way I had it. I'm going to hit that double-sided thing, change this to camera, spacebar over here, perspective view. And now we have this, and we can easily manipulate uh, these joints, and on those joints, you can stabilize onto these joints as well. You can't lock onto vertices very easily unless you have a special script or use point on poly to get a locator onto a vertice that you can then lock onto. But with a joint, uh, you can lock on to with HK tools. So to use HK tools to lock on, um, how do we do that? We have to switch to your hot. You have to switch your hotkey set. There isn't a button for it, I believe, unless I'm missing it miraculously. Um, but hotkey set. If you click this, look at the bottom of your screen. It says warning. Switch to my default duplicate whatever. So if I click it again, it's gonna cycle through other hotkey sets that you have. So now we switch to MM solver. Let's switch it again. My default, HK tools. There we go. I cycled over to HK tools. So I hope I get the hotkey right. I'm going to save. I hope I get the hotkey right, but I think it's shift alt C. Yes. Shift alt C. Um, now that you've stabilized, hit the pipe key. That's the key under your backspace button. So it's the slash button, forward slash or whatever. But when you hold that and then right click, you can now zoom in. And I think if you middle mouse, you can pan around. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a nice clean view that we can work with. And now you can select your joint. And when you move it around, you can see we're stabilized. Now the idea here is, is that I would start to keyframe this joint. So I'm gonna hit Shift W and I can start to move it in whatever way I see fit to get it into place. I often move this stuff like side to side from the camera's perspective, which isn't the most accurate. But again, depends on whatever shot you're doing. Like, you know, the paper may flex and bend and fold, decreasing the distance in the paper. So you have to do stuff like that. But, you know, it's not the cleanest. It's not the, cl it's hard to explain. But for a shot like this, it's totally fine. But, yeah, sometimes I like to go and rough out my major frames first, like all these big movements. Again, auto key is on. So I like to get these big movements out of the way. So that when I come back and do my more refined pass now, so now I'm going to go through frame by frame. Now to frame by frame in Maya, hold alt and then use period and comma. So little arrow keys with period and, period and comma. So holding alt and period and comma lets you go frame by frame. If you use period and comma without alt, you can jump between the keyframes, which is super, super handy. Now this is like synthize when you can go S and D to frame forward and back, and then you can hold A and F to jump between the keyframes. Same thing. All right, so 
how and now how do you nudge this into position because frame by frame you don't want to grab this and move it you don't want to do this manually you just you just don't <laughs> so what do you do uh, let's go to a frame where this is visible right here so when, while you're holding alt use the arrow keys on your keyboard and you'll see that I am now nudging the joint and it's keyframing this is doing it from the space of the camera this is going a little bit slow and if you want it to go faster hold pipe and do your pan zoom out a little bit and it, it'll increase the speed of your nudge but you know keep in mind that it's the more you zoom out of course the less detail you see so if you want to hide this manipulator as well hit Q on your keyboard because when you've hide it, when you've hidden it you can actually still use alt and arrow keys to nudge it which is amazing so this is very quick and dirty. Um, the, tr the tracker here is actually distracting me as well, so I'm gonna come over and hide the object trackers because they don't mean anything here. They really don't. So let's select that again. And I can't make out my detail here that easily. If you wanted to, you could take your image plane in front of all your geometry and have it fade over these lines. But I don't know, I'm looking at the, pic I'm looking at the detail surrounding the corner of this to get this to stick. So now we've done that way, let's go the other way and I'm, I'll probably only do two of these corners and then I'm gonna speed through the last two corners. And let's see if I could think of anything else to talk about. I cannot, <laughs> but if you think that this is a long process, just again, keep in mind that sometimes tracking and synthize requires you you to guide that tracker for every frame, sometimes across 300 or 1,000 frame long shots. So nudging this here really is not a whole big deal. It's something you're going to be doing anyway. It used to be something that was kind of a mental block in my mind, but kind of worked around it with that little bit of mindset. Okay, so now that we have this, um, we can hit play and see what it's doing. Let's highlight this. So we have one corner stinging, uh, stinging. We have one corner sticking quite nicely. And uh, let's just start on this point, but halfway through it, I'm probably going to skip ahead very fast um, because this this process will be a little bit time consuming. So I'm going to take that point. Let's hit Shift Alt C. And Shift Alt C is going to turn off the stabilizer first, and then we got to hit it again. Now we can zoom into this one, and I'm just going to key it with Shift W, uh, Shift W, and now let's move it down into place. Is there a way to hide joints? You could probably, oh yeah, you could probably come up to Show, turn joints off, and you're probably still, yeah, you're still able to manipulate that joint. I forgot about this. It's not very often I use joints because a lot of objects are easier and don't change their rotation to the camera too often. So I end up using clusters a lot. So I'm going to keep mind of what I just did here. But yeah, you can see uh, we're doing a pretty decent job at making it stick here. Uh, again, it's holding alt and you never have to let go of alt. Just hold alt and then you know your period and comma to move frame by frame, right? And then you just keep holding alt so that you can use the arrow keys to nudge. You never have to let go of alt. It becomes very quick. So let me speed through the last of this point and uh, we'll just give it a quick watch and then we'll do the next one as a time lapse as well and then give that a quick watch when I've done it too and so on. And then once we get to the point where we add divisions, we'll talk a little bit more. You'll notice at the start, I actually forgot to block in my major frames like I said I would, which means now now whenever there's an extreme movement in the corner, it takes a while for me to nudge to it. So I'm, I kind of shot myself in the foot, like right here, I gotta, whoops, I grabbed one axis, which was not good. Let's move this. Yeah, so I kind of shot myself in the foot doing that and it took a lot longer. So let's just make sure there's no like major movements up here. 
Okay, not really, so now I can finish my last few frames, and it's so fast that I might as well talk through it. Actually, maybe not. Let's... Oh no, I've got like a couple frames left. You can sit and watch. You're patient. You have nothing to do. Let's be honest, if you're sitting there watching a match move tutorial, do you really have anything better to do? <laughs> Build your career? No. Alright, uh, so now we have... Okay, now we have two corners sticking really well. It looks awesome. Um, yes. So now that we have that, I'm going to save again. Save after you every major milestone, for the love of God. Um, I am so bad at remembering to save. Okay, so now Shift-Alt-C to get out of that stabilized. And yeah, it's looking awesome. Again, looks really cool. And I'm going to do the other points really fast. Okay, so now we got another corner knocked out, and let's switch over to the next corner, last corner. Goody. I too want to take a, a quick second to talk about how when the paper gets bent like this edge and this edge could be contracting towards each other or sorry I meant should be but of course I did not warp it that way but you know if you wanted to make this thing super super accurate you could take the time and make sure that your joints actually fold inwards once the paper is bent but not the level of detail I really want to put into this video because again this this is a hard thing to do. Um, it takes a while, and I don't want this tutorial to be days and, and days. Because you, you can understand that if the paper shrinks, you can move your joints inwards, and that, that's your major keyframes. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. So, you know. Enjoy, enjoy watching this as it is. I'm almost done at this point. All right, so we have our fourth corner here done. Uh, that's just the motion blur. It actually sticks. It's, yeah, just the, you could see the corner faded at the edge. But anyway, so let's hit Shift-Alt-C, get out of our stabilization, and take a little look. Okay, so this looks cool. Uh, but what do we do now? Now, uh, now you pick which which part you want to deform next? Do you want to do you want to deform this way or do you want to deform this way? We got to add divisions. Uh, so typically, what I do is I pick the direction with the largest bend, and then I add the division there and start warping from there. So that would be you know from the middle of the paper going vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and hold Shift Control or uh, Shift. Oh my God. Shift, right click, multi cut. So here, uh, also let me make sure I have some settings, certain settings turned off on my multi cut. I have edge flow turned on, I gotta turn that off. Um, that's something we're gonna look at later, which you will have seen that in my last tutorial about my deformer stuff. So close that. And now I'm just gonna hold control, middle mouse drag so I get a line nice and centered. So this line, now what we want is we want for this point to stick on you know this plant thing here um so we're going to stabilize into this point uh and try to make it match here but notice there's no joint here now for us to stabilize onto we could add extra joints into this uh setup 
but it just adding joints get can get a little bit annoying and tedious sometimes if you got to keep adding a whole bunch every time you div, uh, subdivide so this is kind of where I start to just use clusters because things are kind of close and doing kind of what they should be roughly but let's go let's go set up one cluster real quick so I'm gonna go select a vertice oh I forgot we have to, I have to show you how to stabilize on this now because you can't just select a vertice and stabilize we have a script for that at track but I don't have it here and we gotta work with HK tools so this point uh, first let's make a cluster uh, why am I going here uh, space reason commands create cluster now we have this and now we also want to make a locator which we can just snap somewhere close by somewhere close by uh, now I can with that selected hold shift whoops sorry go to vert vertex mode over here select your point and then shift select your locator and now space come to constrain go to point on poly now your locator sticks and you can now hold shift alt c and stabilize onto this locator and it works the same but this locator is a little bit irritating to look at so I'm just gonna come up to show turn off locators here and yeah now we got really the same result so I can take that new cluster that we made I'm gonna minimize our paper rig stuff um, yeah so now I can move the cluster around and I'm stabilized on that point so I'm gonna go duh um, so let's try stick it to this plant now we'll knock out these frames at the beginning of the shot and this seems like a lot of work because you're probably thinking uh, but I gotta subdivide all of this stuff now and go through and go through every single point each time you actually don't uh, you don't have to and this gets easier the more divisions that you have because the motion will keep will continue to interpolate between them all so now that the paper has kind of changed angle I could honestly keep moving it like it's it's pretty close to moving how it should in fact, I think it's moving exactly how it should. This might be a consequence of the rig. Um, I've seen this before. You and you've seen in my examples where it were it will move sideways depending on the orientation of the object. I think that's nulled out with a rig now. Come to think of it, so this might be good. I'm actually going to keep deforming this just like this. It's working. Um, I've had this work before. I just didn't really draw the parallel, but I think this is the way that I'm gonna do this from now on I think I'm always just gonna have a mesh skinned and then I'm gonna apply a cluster that's that's kinda of the way to go now oh I gotta move this by mouse I'm gonna middle mouse again oh uh, something I also wanna keep in mind when I get to the point where I fold it down I don't really want to just move it side to side it's more preferential to straight up give it the bend like in depth here so I'm going to just carefully make sure I try to move it parallel to the paper and I gotta get it over to this thing so let's move it down 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 there we go now I'll go back and watch it so between these frames you can see we have the bend but now it slides in the middle so we can go frame by frame and just nudge it into position and your tracker is always going to head into that next keyframe that we went ahead and placed and that's a little bit rough let's move it over here And now the paper is what going to be bent in the opposite direction now it's going upwards so let's go to the side here and move it all the way up and we're moving it kind of outwards and we shouldn't so let's bring it back that way make sure it's nice and clean and make sure that it's gonna land on that on that area right there so let's go level it out just upwards did I bring it out this way a little bit yes I did okay Wow, that actually worked out pretty well. Just trying to keep it clean. Okay. So let's go back to the other frames now and make sure that 
it stays in that spot as it bends to that new keyframe. The motion blur is getting kind of intense. Some people might think you need to spend time like really figuring out figuring out what that is, except it's motion blur. Nobody nobody knows what's going on. But that being said, still try to try to find its position as best you can. You could still kind of make it out. You can see the overall motion. At this point, I'm just kind of doing what kind of feels right, because that motion's a bit too fast for me to keep up with. Okay, so now let's get rid of that last bend. Flatten it out again. And you can see now we can just bring it out a little bit. And now, pick it back up. So let's just go and fill in these in between again. Sometimes I like to adjust one here and then I'll go here and just keep adjusting these frames so that I can meet in the middle. It some, Sometimes it helps me connect them a little better if the motions are super, super erratic. And the last few frames, I'll just nudge that into place. All right. Now we are left with this. Uh, let's full screen this, take another look. Wait, did I mess up a part? One part felt funny. Oh, not really. Okay. And let's just unstabilize, just, just for the hell of it, so we can take another look at this. For fun. It's looking pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to speed through that last point. It's the exact same thing as that. So yeah, you're not going to miss out on anything. Okay, so now I have gotten that next major bend done. So if we give it a watch, we can see what it's doing. I also want to point out in case somebody wonders why this doesn't look like it's sticking right here. It's, it is, it's just, it's hard to see, but there's a faint line here, which it's in the section of the motion blur. It's just because the background is so blown out, but you always want to stick to the center of the motion blur, period. Um, okay, so let's turn off the stabilize. Shift Alt C and pipe key to get out of pan 2D zoom. And I'm going to delete that locator. The HK tools thing always creates a locator. Oh, wait, this, wait, never mind. I did this. Haha, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Okay, um, so we have this. I don't know how much farther I need to go to, exp to further demonstrate, you know, what's happening, but at this point, you've learned everything. So, really, you do the same process. So if pick the next thing that bends the most, maybe it's maybe it's the horizontal angle of this page, or maybe it's more vertical because look at you know, you can see the curvature. So we can add more. And I can hold multi-cut and there we go, right? We've added more geometry that we can now add another cluster to and keep warping. Um something we could also do is we can go into multi-cut, uh whoop. Okay, let's go into object mode. Now shift right click multi-cut options. 
and we can turn on edge flow which now if we make a make a poly you can see it rounded out a little bit and I'll do the same on this side and it rounded out a little bit so edge flow it's gonna keep calculating the angle of your faces and whatever and it's gonna fill in so these edge flow points are now doing half the work for you because look at it this is what it's doing now it's already rounding out those edges if I didn't use edge flow uh, if I turn off if I turn off edge flow and now do it you could see we have this and now you have more to deform so I'm gonna turn that off and or undo that turn on edge flow click it in and now some of the work is done for you now some of that motion is being calculated for you it's being interpolated for you so you can basically reduce the amount of work now uh, by a little bit um so I'm gonna see let's go through a couple of these points and see if it's any quicker with these last points that we already did so let's go ahead and make another cluster recent commands create cluster and uh, you still want to keep into the habit of uh, if you can oh by the way depending on how far along you get you could just make a cluster on the whole edge create cluster where's my points going why are they making themselves down there Am I making locators? Why am I doing that? Let's try that again. Edge. Now space. Deform. Cluster. Okay, I don't know what that was about. I likely missed something while I was talking, but yeah, depending on how comfortable you get with uh, the more that you've done, you could totally start to group up other other vertices and start to nudge them together. And you could see we have a little bit of this kind of stick in there. So I'm focusing on this point, but you know, this one's kind of moving as well, getting some of that motion. But let's just see what happens. So it takes a, a lot less effort for me to nudge. Right now, I'm not gonna stabilize and set up that whole system because I'm just gonna gun through this now. You, you get the idea, you know to stabilize. Um, you know what you're doing. But notice if we do two points, you're gonna have this problem now. You see uh, these points are starting to fight each other even though they have some of that curvature. Um, we've lost some of it because of the angle that we had to push it at. So we could try to recover it and see we got some of that back, but I don't like manipulating multiple points at the same time. So I'm gonna delete that point. And yeah, I just wanted to show you, you could, and there's some problems that come along with it. So back to vertice, and at this point, I am just going to treat this uh, the same way. I'm gonna roughen a couple major major frames and you can see we don't have a perfect 4x6 paper that's there's not much you can do about that uh, ideally if you want something amazing you're going to need a witness cam which most productions are not going to do for you and they might say well this isn't a perfect rectangle well that's kind of on them that's it is very very hard to retain a shape on a deforming object uh, so yeah, usually it is done with witness cams no questions asked um, so this could be motion blur but let's just drop it down anyway and again I'm not stabilizing right now like I could be focusing more on making sure this sticks I think I referenced that log before so you know we kind of did a point there just to be quick and sloppy and dirty um, let me do a couple extra of these points just very fast and then I'll get back to you Okay, so now I roughly adjusted a couple extra vertices, just very crudely and quickly. Um, but you know, you have the idea. Again, you could stabilize in all the individual points and nudge them, and take your time and make sure that make sure that the paper looks somewhat realistic in space. But again, this method, you're not gonna do, you're not gonna make magic happen. Like all that's all that's required is the general shape. Most 
types of shots in VFX never require that you go 100% accurate with something like this. Because you can attach characters' hands to this and all that stuff if you need to. Um, you know, just try your best to keep the scale as close as possible. And it's the kind of detail nobody can ever perceive in a movie if there is a mistake or not. Because uh, smoke can interact with this. You can have some CG like little particles bounce off this page as it warps if you, you know, since we've kind of made it in 3D. And you won't be able to tell like if there's anything wrong at all. Uh, so yeah, so really at this point if you wanted to you re you could go and start adding in oh well, okay Shift multi cut you could go in and add in like your middle structure now if you feel like you have to line up some of the points in the center like uh, Like the see that point on the steering wheel of the lawnmower It yeah, see it drops a little bit Like that doesn't stick amazingly so you can take these locators and start doing clusters on them as well, but for the most part, uh, this tutorial is kind of done. We've handled, oh, let's undo this. Let's go ahead and add, oh, we have our edge flow on, cool. Edge flow, make sure you have edge flow on when you do this because you're gonna want all of these points to calculate their bend properly. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, we might be done this for this tutorial. You could spend a lot more time on it and you know get the middle to stick, but even something like this, if they, if if your leads or whoever, your supervisors, told you that they were going to replace this page fully in CG and not just texture this, I mean, this is fine too because this object is bending really close to the image. So there might be a discussion to be had about something like this being good to pass through or, yeah, you got to spend some... Maybe they're going to put an image like comped into this photograph so that, so that means you might have to focus on an area and make sure that sticks 100%. Yeah, there's a lot of ways that this can go, but for the most part, this is um, this is done. Let's just give it a color, take a nice, cool look at it. What yellow is cool? Yeah, that's fine. That looks nice and bright. All right, but anyway, I think that's all I had for this. So, how do we bake this and finalize it? So, you might want to do UVs and all that stuff for whoever's going to put image on this. So, here's kind of what I do. I I duplicate the mesh, and where is it? I duplicate the mesh and it's locked because of the rigging stuff so I'm gonna right click over here unlock that stuff and now we can move it around I'm going to make an object that's nice and clean in the world and try to flatten it out as best as I can which again you're not gonna be perfect here because it, the plane is warped it doesn't matter so let's also hit shift I to isolate it so this object, let's quickly do some UVs. I'm gonna go UV editor, bring that up, and it opened up on my other screen, good. So now we have our UV editor and our UV toolkit. So here's all I would do for paper like this. I'm also gonna turn out this texture view, it looks kinda stupid. So you think, you might look at this and think, hey, there's UVs there already, you could just leave this for them, and you actually could, you totally could. You can take the shell and uh, uh, you can squeeze it and, you know, Make sure you put on like a checkerboard or something first, so I'm, I can go with uh, a Lambert. Let's close tool settings. And material. Let's go to color and we'll apply a checker and then hit six. There, you can see that. And you could, you could do this, uh, scale it manually. Or if you have to, let's pretend that you had no UVs. So I can take this from this view and I'm gonna go with a, I gotta close this. I think. Oh, never mind. Shift right click. Um, where am I? I'm so slow. Uh, here's mapping, project from camera or planar. But we're just gonna go project on. Uh, with we're good. We're just gonna project camera based map because I have to straighten these lines out anyway. A UV, a planar projection would give us the same warped lines. So now I'm gonna select my shell. And where'd my where'd my other toolbar go? UV set editor, nope. There we go. So with our UV toolkit here, I'm gonna come over to unfold, and uh, we could go optimize if we want. Oh, that's pretty bad. Don't use that. <laughs> Instead, select your lines and come over to unfold along U, and then let's try V. Wait, why isn't this working? Hey, this is Cal from the future. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I don't know why I missed this detail, but 
Do you be this thing? I don't know why. I was using. I tried to unfold long this, thinking it was going to straighten my lines, and didn't bother to go to straighten UVs. I swear I do this many times and I do it successfully, but yeah, I tend to unfold the thing so it's kind of unfolded, and then I go straighten UVs, and then I get, well, straight UVs. Uh, yeah, so that's all I do with UVing the object, typically. Anyway, let's get back to the other thing. So I messed around with stuff and for some reason yet another thing that I've done a hundred times is not acting as predictably as I would have hoped. So if you're good at UVs, that's cool, make your awesome UVs for this, but these these UVs are pretty straight and they follow the parallel lines uh, they follow the lines parallel to the photo as we've created it on screen. So I'm going to leave the UVs as they are, I guess. But now that I've have this weird orientation on this plane and it's centered the world and it has UVs, we've baked it all out. I can name it to paper anim or something now I'm gonna close that too so now this paper why is it still under paper rig let's get it out of there so, okay so now that we've taken it out of the group it's in the world space we want to freeze out all these nasty transforms so spacebar modify freeze transformations now it's all nice and clean and I want to snap it back up to that plane which isn't there right now so let's click off of this plane hit shift I again so we can unisolate it Okay, so I'm going to snap it up to this plane. We're going to hold D, snap the pivot, and so long as I don't rotate this pivot, I'll center snap it to this later. But let's just snap it over here, and then we'll rotate this into play. And I'll be honest, this is actually a common thing to do to manually rotate some things, because match move, you have to do a lot of weird, weird stuff to get things to work, because match move a lot of the time is a lot of cheating because we're never given enough data to accurately solve or warp shots as they should be and then people you know scream at us for not being able to do a 100 percent job <laughs> but it's actually impossible for many many shots so this is honestly close enough like really really close I could spend all day i wish my snap worked um i don't know why it didn't but somebody might have figured out how to make theirs work and they're just laughing they're golden because they got it somehow and let's see last little bit sure whatever okay it's pretty close so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our our new plane our new geo and our old one let's go spacebar uh, deform and wrap so that it's gonna follow the motion but if I scrub Oh, it does stick. Cool. I didn't think it was going to stick. Sometimes, depending on your setup, you might have to also do a parent constraint of your new object to your old one, depending on how you move your stuff. Because if I move this rig, you can see that doesn't work, but the wrap still works. So yeah, it depends on your setup. You might have to parent constraint and wrap. But the point of that, I'm going to hide my paper rig, save, and the new rig, I can now just go to spacebar, edit, keys, bake simulation, go to options, Make sure control points is checked on. Hit bake. And now I'm going to save again. And uh, usually I don't delete the stuff until I'm in a new file, but I'm kind of comfortable right now. I'm going to delete all of this. Take this camera. You can do a camera bake. Again, I have some buttons here that you don't have, but you can go to HK Tools, come over to Bake Camera. Yes, bake it and the look trackers I don't have any trackers and my objects useless now so delete it so now we have our paper and our camera so I can go over here let's go use background and you could see we have things working as they should um, my image plane is not cached now I believe but yeah we could have spent more some more time in the center of course but I'm not gonna that is a lot of work and uh, it's not worth my time to do it for this tutorial unfortunately but you saw everything that I that you need to do to achieve this and also on how to go beyond it. Yeah, so that's about it. You can deliver that to a client, give them your camera, your scene, whatever, and yeah, you're laughing. So with that being said, hope you stuck around for this entire tutorial. It was very tedious and I applaud anybody who actually goes through with this and appreciates the really janky method that I've made I don't I'm certain many people have like do it like this as well I just haven't gotten to meet people who have because most studios provide the geometry and 
the seniors and people who I'd love to talk to are all employed, so I've never seen them <laughs> come by wherever I am. But yeah, hope you enjoyed and have fun warping things elsewhere. Yeah, later. <laughs>